In the last section, you reflected on your goals and expectations for your postdoc and also what you think your mentor expects of you. In this section, you will begin to develop a timeline for your postdoc and the milestones that will lead to your success. The table you see on your screen here has a place for you to write in the goals you reflected on in the previous section. The next column will help you break down those goals into smaller, more manageable tasks. Next, map all of these smaller tasks onto a time frame. When do you expect to work on them and how long might they take you? It may help you if you draw a line on a separate piece of paper for each goal and map the tasks horizontally as a timeline, or you can use the column in the table provided. If you aren't sure about this column yet, that's okay. This is a place you can get feedback from your mentor. For each of your subtasks, what does success look like? How would someone else know you were successful? What do you think success looks like from your mentor's perspective? What are the things that will promote your success and help you complete your goals? What are the challenges or barriers to completing your goals? How do you expect to resolve those challenges? For those of you whose current appointment does not align with how long you expect to be a postdoc, how would this timeline shift if it was constrained to your current appointment length? What tasks or goals would you have to prioritize? Let's talk about an example. I'll pick one goal and walk through it with you here, and then you can also download additional examples to compare and contrast with your own. A common goal postdocs have is obtaining their own funding. Let's walk through submitting a fellowship proposal as an example goal. In this example, the postdoc has three tasks she needs to finish before she can submit her fellowship application. One, finish her preliminary experiments that she will need to report on in the proposal. Two, identify secondary mentors that can be listed in the proposal's mentoring plan and obtain their letters of support. Three, finish writing the draft proposal she has already started working on. The proposal is due six weeks from now. The postdoc will work on all of these tasks in parallel, but is prioritizing subgoals one and two early in the timeline because she will need to obtain and analyze her data to finish writing, and she will also need to give her faculty co-mentors time to prepare their materials. Success in this case looks like a submitted, well, let's face it, a funded proposal, but success may also be submitting it without the process being stressful. Drafting things well in advance of when feedback is needed could factor into what success looks like, which is why the postdoc here has outlined an aggressive timeline to get these things done. Success can also be defined as the final products for each task, like data figures or tables representing the experiments she's completed. This postdoc has also identified the resources and people she needs to help her be successful. In this case, she doesn't need help with the experiments, just instrument time. She does need co-mentors to complete her mentoring plan, and she'd like feedback from the postdoc office and her faculty mentor on the draft pieces of her proposal. A major barrier to getting this proposal done is time. This postdoc needs to make the time to write even though her other experiments are ongoing. She has noticed she is more likely to write before getting into experiments, and so she has blocked off time in the mornings to work on the drafts before starting the rest of her day. This is just one example, and we have provided many more here for you to review. After you've done so, now reflect on your own table. Is there anything else you'd like to add? We will revisit this as we connect your goals to your career plan in Module 2.